In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this image. I did it on my 3D printer using four different colored pens. So this is a quick overview of the code I used and the process I used to generate these images. So I'm going to skip walking through the code and let's just walk through some of the steps. So we start with the source image. Here's the original image I used. One thing I did manually was also create a mask. Basically the black areas here are the only the parts that we're interested in. All the white areas get ignored. So let's us make sure we're not drawing in the background. From the mask, uh, we automatically generate an outline. This basically helps us let us draw lines around the edge and make it a little bit more defined. From here, we split it into the CMY color space. So printing with ink, um, you want to print with four different colors, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Technically, you can do this with three. You don't actually need the black. But to get a darker, richer black, um, we usually add the black channel as well. And here you can see the image, for instance, the cyan, the only parts that really light up are the eyes. And if you look back at the original image up here, she has blue eyes and that's why the cyan's coming through there. Um, the magenta shows up with the red lips, black and the hair, um, all of this mostly makes sense. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sample these four different images and then have pin strokes uh, for each of those different channels. So in addition to the raw kind of grayscale image per channel, uh, by the way, the more white this is, the, the more of that color that shows. Um, I also went and extracted the edges for the image. So the intuition here is that we don't want to just lay down ink where there is um, a, a bright pixel of the given color. We also want to try and follow the edges. So here we ran a Gaussian filter and this pulls out basically where the lines are in the image. And the code under the hood is basically looking at both the um, source image, the grayscale part of that one channel, as well as this edge-based image. Next, the code basically goes and samples a whole bunch of points um, in that image. And this is using a technique called rejection sampling. Basically, the, the more of that color, the more likely we are to, to pick a point. The less of that color, the less likely we are. And these are basically the control nodes for a bunch of Bezier curves that we're going to generate next. The idea here is that we basically pick a point and we pick another random point and pretend to draw a line there. And then we count basically underneath that line how many pixels have we colored in that should be colored in. We then pick another point and count those pixels and pick another point. The one with the most pixels colored in that should be colored in is the winner. And we then go take that and move on to the next point. We do this over and over again for each of these different points in each channel and then for all the different channels. From that, we actually generate the Bezier curves um, for each channel. So here we can see the four different channels. Um, first we do cyan. Here you can see lots of clustering around the eyes plus a little bit kind of going through the hair. Magenta shows up very strongly in the lips. And again, kind of black we have kind of going through the hair as well as through the eyes. So these are all plotted individually. What we're gonna do is actually draw them all together. So here we have an image where all four of those curves are plotted over. And this is basically what we're gonna have for our final image. From here, we turn this um, Bezier curves, we pull them out and turn them into G-code, which we then send to the printer. So using G-code, we use this attachment I made for my 3D printer to actually draw on the paper. Here we'll give a quick example So the pen moves over and then it drops to get into contact with the paper and then it draws. Of course the first program you always have to write is Hello World. 
So let me show a little bit about this uh, pin attachment that I made. So there's actually two different parts here. So there's a carriage that moves up and down and has some springs that push down. Originally, I tried to attach to the 3D printer just using sort of rubber bands. The problem is you actually need downward force from the pen onto the paper. And so I wound up making these two pieces here. Here's the part that attaches to the 3D printer. This here is just a cutout so that registers to the 3D printer. In here is actually a couple of magnets, so it just clips on, and that's strong enough. Um, and then um, the, the pen itself slides into this part here. Um, you can basically have these little thumb screws so the pen can actually come in. You can see that they attach right here and they just clamp right down. Um, it's relatively straightforward. It took a few iterations to actually get it right. The idea is that we can replace the pen, put it in here. There's a kind of a magic level of how deep it needs to go based on the Z height of the printer. You uh, screw, it, screw it down. The print's now, pin is now in place. You can then attach it. And now we put together all the pieces. First we load the cyan pin and let it start to draw. Next is magenta. Then yellow. And finally black. There's some improvements I'm thinking about. One is picking the different points I'm using for the sampling. Right now the points are picked randomly. It might be nice to distribute them better um, based upon the density of the image. The pen attachment works relatively well. I may print a few more on my printer so that I can just keep the pens loaded and then pop it off using the magnets and put on the next color. I'm going to try this on a bunch more images, so keep looking out for those. Thanks!